there, whoever's on here this afternoon. Um, Welcome to Tuesday to Talk. Hello. With Pastor Jack and Pastor Rick. I see Gigi's here, Gail Zanke's here, down in Tennessee, and New Life is here, and I think some others will be joining us shortly. Well, we have a very uh, special topic to talk about. Jack, when you, well, first of all, I think maybe we should pray. Okay. You want to pray God's blessing, Jack? Okay. okay. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Um, thank you for doing so much for us. Thank you for providing for us, for giving us food and shelter and a home and hope <coughs> and comfort and protecting us. Thank you, Lord, even though we don't deserve it. Um, thank you for dying on the cross, for forgiving all of our sins. And um, please help us today with Tuesday Talk. Give us words to speak and... Let everyone have a great time, and let everyone be more educated in your word. Um, so, I pray for all the confusion and all the bad things going on in the world, that you will sort it out um, according to your will and your plan. Yes. And even if we don't understand your plan, help us um, help us um, please you, please guide us, and let us have a great day. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, maybe if, if uh, you hit your share button, we can get a few more people involved. Um, so, Jack, let me ask you a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. When you think about roads in the Bible, mm -hmm. what, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Like a dirt path. A dirt path? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in the Bible. In Bible times, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I, I want to ask you, one time Jesus uh, taught about there were two different types of roads to take. Mm -hmm. One of them was the good one, and one of them was the bad one. The wide and the narrow. The, the wide and the narrow. Mm -hmm. Hey, Denora's on here? Hi, Denora. The wide road and the narrow road, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So... There's also some roads that were named. Like if I mention to you, have you ever heard of the road to Emmaus? No. Let me tell you about the road to Emmaus. We find it in Luke chapter 24, but this isn't really part of the lesson, but I just want to give a little introduction. So Jesus had died on the cross. Uh, it was probably... Uh, that was Friday. This was probably Saturday, Saturday night, maybe. And uh, two of the disciples were, were leaving Jerusalem, going to a place called Emmaus. And it says that they were very discouraged because they thought Jesus was going to be their Savior, and now Jesus has died. And they didn't know that he was... Or maybe this was on Sunday. Maybe this might have been on Sunday. Yeah, this was on Sunday, sorry. They didn't hear the news that Jesus had risen from the grave. So while they were walking, there were two of them. All of a sudden, a third person shows up and walks alongside with them. But they're all covered up and they're all sad and dejected and everything. So and they just let this. Him? They didn't. Well, they they noticed him, but they didn't know who it was. Mm -hmm. But then they started talking to him. Mm -hmm. And because the person said, "Why are you so sad?" And they said, "You you don't know. Uh, everyone knows what happened. We thought Jesus was the one." And, he died and so they just kept walking and then finally they, they decided to take a break to have some dinner hey Tony's here Hello. Um, and while they were having dinner this third person revealed himself to the other two and it was Jesus huh. and so it. and so while they were breaking bread together Jesus revealed who he was so there's a lesson in that so people say you like let's say someone's down in the dumps and they're depressed so they say, you need to have an Emmaus Road experience. An Emmaus Road experience. And, and so you have to know what Emmaus Road means. It means that if you're feeling de depressed or discouraged or things don't go your way, trust God that Jesus will show up to, to, to show you what to do yeah. with your situation. So they, they were breaking bread together. In the breaking of bread, Jesus appeared. So the point there is that if we're going through a depression or a problem, we need to be able to kind of step back and have some fellowship with God 
And in, in the act of stepping out and, and stepping into our, our, our relationship with him, he, he will reveal himself to us. So that's what you call an Emmaus Road experience. But there is another road I wanted to talk about today. And this road is found in Acts chapter 9. Anyone know what this road might be called? This is the road to Damascus. Wait, I, you know what? There's another road I just thought of. Wait a minute. Let me, let me see here. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 um. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's another road. I've got three roads here. Hey, Johnny, good to see you, man. Yeah, I missed your church, but hope to see you this Sunday. So we have Emmaus Road. Here's another road. The road to Gaza. Gaza Road. You know what Gaza Road is? No. Gaza Road is a road that uh, the Lord told Philip to go on, um, to go to a place called Gaza. And while he was on that road, he met a person that was seeking the Lord. So we could say someone may need to have a Gaza Road experience where they're searching for God and the Lord sends someone their way that could explain the scriptures like, Paul, like Philip did to this person. And they could become born again as well. That, that's called a Gaza Road experience. So we have Emmaus Road, Gaza Road, and uh, the one we, were, we really wanted to talk about is called Damascus Road. Damascus Road. Now, does anyone know what Damascus is? Do you know what Damascus is? It's a city. It's a city. Like Gaza is a city, Emmaus is a city, Damascus is a city. And so here's the story. Paul, whose name at this point was Saul, um, is, going to Damascus. is going to Damascus. Do you know why he's going there? To persecute believers. To persecute believers. He wasn't a believer himself yet. He thought he was a believer. Well, he was a believer in God. But he wasn't a believer in Jesus. He believed in the Old Testament law. And he was granted permission to go to Damascus to round up the Christians and throw, throw them in jail and have them put to death. And something very unusual happened mm -hmm. on his road, on his way to Damascus. So this is called a Damascus road experience. So we have the Emmaus Road experience, that's when we're feeling mm -hmm. dejected or disappointed and we, we need God to show up and bring life and hope mm -hmm. to us. We have a Gaza Road experience mm -hmm. when uh, we're searching for God and we find God because the Lord sends some Christian people our way to reveal who He is. And now we have a Damascus Road experience when, um, when Paul... Um, has a radical salvation experience. So, I'm going to ask you to read, Jeff, verses 1 through 9. Okay, this is Acts 9, verses 1 through 9. Okay. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him, saying that, to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick, kick against the goads. What does that mean? Well, we'll talk about that in a second. But we done? So he, trem so he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no more. He saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him to, into Damascus. 
and he was three days without sight and neither ate or drank. All right, so Paul's on the way to Damascus. He's going to persecute the Christians and, and arrest them and bring them back in and, and have them put to death. While he's on the way, Jesus appears. Mm -hmm. A light sh shined all around Paul. A voice came, and um, he heard this voice. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So as Paul was persecuting the Christians, he was really persecuting Jesus. And Paul said, who are you, Lord? Who are you? And the Lord said, I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting. And as Jack said, he, he said this, it is hard for you to kick against the goads. Now that word goad is up for interpretation. No one really knows exactly what that is referring to, but there's, there's a sim symbolism involved. In other words, when you think you're doing something good, but you're doing something bad, mm -hmm. it's like you're, 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 you're hurting yourself by doing what you think is good, and it's really not good. That's what that saying mean, means. Well, I'm trying to think of an example how we could explain that. Let's say um, I want to paint my house. Mm -hmm. and so I get this, all this paint and stuff, and I start painting the house, and I'm doing a great job, but I never scraped off the old paint. I never fixed the wood that was all deteriorated and rotten. So I'm putting paint on it, but the paint isn't sticking on it. Mm -hmm. So like I'm doing something that's good, but it's not going to work because the preparation wasn't done. In the same manner, Jesus is saying to Paul, Paul, what are you doing? You're doing this work, but you're fighting against something that it's not going to work out for you. And uh, so Paul, trembling, said, well, what do you want me to do? And uh, this is where Paul has his salvation experience. You know, Jesus appeared. He said, why are you persecuting me? And, and Paul said, who are you? And he, the Lord said, I am Jesus. And then, okay, what do you want me to do? In other words, he surrendered to the Lord at that point. What do you want me to do? I, okay, you, you knocked me down to the ground. I, now we can't see. So it's a pretty serious dilemma that he's in. Hey, Eva Rogers, good to see you, and Danica as well, and your mommy's here, Stacy. So we're talking about the three different roads in the Bible. Well, not the narrow and the wide, that's another story. We're talking about Emmaus, we're talking about Gaza, and we're talking about Damascus, we're really talking about Damascus Road. So Paul is knocked to the ground, and he can't see, and uh, what does it say here? He went three days without seeing, and he didn't eat nor drink. He was really, really kind of messed up. His whole life changed. And uh, he was led into the city by these people that he was with. And the story continues by saying that uh, the Lord sent uh, Ananias to minister to Paul that prayed for him. And uh, he recovered his sight and he was filled with the Holy Spirit and baptized and he, was, he became a follower of Christ. Uh, which Ananias was a little bit hesitant to do because Ananias knew that Paul uh, persecuted the church and, and he, he was not so sure that Paul's salvation was genuine. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said, Ananias, it's real. He's a chosen vessel of mine. I have great, a great work for him to do. So anyway, I want to talk today about this Damascus Road experience. Now some of you uh, may know about Damascus Road. But from this story, just like from the story of the, the Gaza Road and the story of Emmaus Road, people have put together uh, study guides and study topics. And the topic for Damascus Road is, how can we help someone understand that they need salvation? Like Paul was on Damascus Road when he realized he needed salvation. What can we do to help people have a Damascus Road experience lead them to Jesus. <laughs> we can lead them to Jesus but we want to talk about how we do that so the first thing we have to do is talk about well the first thing that hey Sandy good to see you uh, talking about a Damascus Road experience Sandy from Acts 9 
The first thing we have to do, like, like Paul realized what he was doing was wrong. He thought he was doing good. He had a lot of passion, a lot of zeal. It was totally misplaced. And the Lord had to wake him up and show him that what he was doing was wrong and sinful. So we know from other scriptures, the first step in anyone's salvation is in Romans 3, 23. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll read, uh, let's see. We'll read, uh, you can read 21, 22, and 23. But let me, let me just say this. So if you, if you know this already, great. But you may want to write down these scriptures because it might come in handy when you're talking to someone. A family member, a co-worker, someone you meet somewhere. I've, I've committed these to memory so I could have a conversation about it without quoting scripture, you know, book and verse. But uh, it's good to have it in the back of your mind. So the first scripture is found in Romans chapter 3. In verse, uh, well, 23. We're going to read 21 to 23. So why don't you read that one, Jack? Okay. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So that's the very first thing. And that's the hardest thing for a lot of people to 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 uh, realize that they're a sinner. But um, I, I've seen some videos on Facebook lately, and they have these evangelist people going up to strangers, like at a beach or at a park, and they have a conversation with them. And they say things like, if you were to die tonight, why would you go to heaven? What do you think most people would say? Or do you think most people would say they would go to heaven? And then if they do say yes, why do you think they would go, get to go to heaven? Because they, because maybe they're Christians, but if they're well, no, not they, Christians. Yeah, if they're not Christians, but they think they're going to go to heaven, usually it's because they say, because I'm a good person. So then you have to get into a conversation. Because if you were a good person, you would have to be 100% perfect. So you have to ask some questions. Have you ever done anything wrong? And most people say, yeah. Like, uh, have you ever told a little lie? Uh, yeah. Have you ever stolen anything, even a little something? Uh, yeah, yeah. Have you ever had a bad thought in your mind about something? Yeah, I have done that. Have you ever gotten angry and wanted to hurt somebody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you're already guilty of five different things. But if you're guilty of one little thing, you'll never make it to heaven. So. We have a problem. It's called a sin problem. And the scripture says, Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory. That's numero uno. We all have to understand. So if you're in a conversation with someone, you could tell them, I'm a sinner, uh, my whatever, this person's a sinner, and you're a sinner. We're all, we're all equally sinful. I mean, some people may do worse things than others, but even, even good people, it's a hard thing to recognize, but even good people are sinners. Mm-hmm. So number one is Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So these are called Damascus Road scriptures based on Paul's experience in Acts chapter 9. So he recognized that he was a sinner. Then the second one is this, Romans 6, 23. Um, and remember, Paul, he had his experience with the Lord Jesus. And um, Jesus said to Paul, why are you persecuting me? You're persecuting me. And he had to pay the consequences for persecuting the Lord. Yeah, so, Paul wrote Romans. He did. So he knows what he's talking yeah. about. So what's Romans 6.23? You have it right there? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, so we said two things. One is all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Number two, 
the wages of sin or, or the reward of sin, the, the, what you get out of sin is death, meaning separation from God, meaning torment in hell. So the wages, all, all are sinners, and the result of sin is that you die mm -hmm. and go to hell. Mm -hmm. But then it says, but the free gift of God free. is what? Is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So the wages of sin is death, but God has a free gift for us. But if we ask for forgiveness then he forgives what if what if it's like a second before the rapture and you sin and you don't have time to forget to ask for forgiveness and you never accepted the lord no and you did like you're a good like you're a yeah, christian I, with a good relationship with christ but you just sinned like a second yeah, before the rapture I, I think that that will be, I think God will cover you under his blood. You'll be okay. Because, I mean, if you, you would probably have, like, if you had more time, you would probably have been not Right. See, and we're saved by belief. Yeah. We're not saved by good works or good deeds. Yeah. So anyway, so, okay, all have sinned and all fall short, and the wages of sin is death. So we have a problem. Oh, Sandy has a question. If a child pass before a certain age, they go right to heaven because they are pure. And if they tell a fib, they are forgiven because they are too young to know the difference from a lie. Yes, Sandy, we believe that a child before the age of accountability, if they were to die, they would go directly to heaven. And Jesus said he loved, the, he loved the children for such is the kingdom of God. Uh, the question would be, you know, what is the age of accountability? That's a, and every child is probably a little bit different within a year or two. But when a child begins to understand these, uh, these types of you know, reasoning that Jesus came, I'm a sinner, once that happens, then they need to make a decision. Okay, so all have sinned, the wages of sin is death, but there's a free gift. Then we read over in Ephesians, verses uh, 8 and 9, uh, something about this gift. You want to read that, Jack? Amen. Yeah. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. I always like those verses because um, Paul's writing to the Ephesians here. This is Ephesians two eight and nine. It says, uh, "By grace you've been saved through faith." I always look at it this way: um, God's grace combined with our faith produces salvation mm. it's not that we have to do anything there's nothing we could do it's as if we could do something we would probably boast about it like oh i'm a better person than you because i gave more money to the church or i gave so and so a ride to church or whatever and i do all these good things and it, we, we could never get saved like that we're saved by god's grace in our faith in what the Lord did for us. What if your parents, like you, your parents are both like non-Christian atheists and you never were like exposed to like Christian people or anything Christian and like you never even had a chance. What would happen then? Well, that's a good question, Jack. But again, the word does say that someone could be just walking outside and looking at, at the stars at night or the trees or mm -hmm. God's creation and recognize there must be something other than humanity that made all of this. Right. And so if they put their belief in the creator and they never really heard a clear presentation of the gospel, mm -hmm. I think God would somehow uh, base their judgment on what they believed at the time. But that, that raises another question of how important it is for the church to get out there and to proclaim the things of God. Jack, you remember Hillstock. Mm -hmm. And how many, we did it for 11 years, and every year we give away bicycles, 25 bicycles. Remember, we had puppet shows, and all the children would come. There'd be like 100, 100 kids or more than that. 
that would come around and hear the gospel. And, and so we always, that's why we do that, so that every, every child has a chance to hear the gospel. They probably would never come to church, but they'd go to a park and get a free bicycle. But we take advantage of the opportunity and, and preach Christ to their children. We did it through puppet shows, music ministries, human videos. So anyway, by grace you're saved through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. It's a gift of God. So let's say, uh, here's a gift, a new life coffee cup. Pretty nice. So Jack, I have a gift for you. So what, what, what would you have to do to get this gift? I mean, here, here's a gift for you. What, what would you do? Remember? Would you leave it in my hand? I would take it. You would what? I would take it. You would take it? You're giving it to well, me. Well, I'm giving here. Okay. But now, if you didn't take it, what would happen? I still have it. Yeah. So you have to take it. So take it. That's how it is with salvation. Jesus is offering a gift. Here's the gift. You've got to take it. <laughs> You've got to receive it. You know, you have to take it to yourself. And, and that's, that's important. Now, just, just knowing that there's a gift, like, like if you know that I have a gift for you, mm -hmm. well, that's great, but you don't have the gift. But you know I have a gift for you. Mm -hmm. So just like salvation, someone may know that God has the salvation, but they never received it. So you have to receive it in your heart. So let's go to number four. I'll give you a summary in just a minute. But Romans chapter 10. Now re remember, these are, these are called the Damascus Road Scriptures. How to lead someone to Christ, like Paul was led to Christ. Uh, Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. Let's, re let's read 8, 9, and 10. Mm. Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10. <clears throat> what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For the, with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All right, so... <clears throat> If you confess with your mouth mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. so that means you have to say it. Mm -hmm. Now there's another scripture that says there's life and death in the power of the tongue. And we always equate that with blessing people or hurting people. But there's also in another sense, there's life and death in the power of the tongue and how we confess Jesus as Lord. Some people use the name of Jesus as, a, as like a bad thing, and that's sinful. But others use the name of Jesus as, a, as the name, the one that saves us. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Sandy said. When my twin granddaughter daughters were only five, I had them say the salvation prayer, even though my family are not believers. Okay, so they will be 10 this September. And Ava, the other day, said, Nana, I pray, I pray just... Nana, I pray, just pray, so I, uh, just pray. So I said, how do you know about God and know how to pray? And she said, from you. So see that the young, that the young uh, planted that seed in her mind. Yeah, it's, uh, right. So yeah, so many years ago, you're, you're speaking life and speaking the word of God into her, this young child. She got it. That's very, very important. A very very good thing to do, Sandy. I commend you for that. And the kids don't forget, you know, they, they remember. Hey, Tony said, nice haircut. Thank you. Yeah, Jack and I went together this time to get our haircut. All right. Um, so if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. In other words, you say it. Jesus, Jesus is my Lord. And you believe in your heart that what? That what? God did what? God raised Jesus from the dead. All right, so the, the whole account of the resurrection is like central to our faith. We have to believe in that, that God raised Jesus from the dead. That's the, the pinnacle of our faith right there. 
Um, it says, with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Uh, oh, 1230. My, my, my. Well, okay, so the last one is Revelation 3.20. I'm just going to tell you what it says. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Like this. Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart. Revelation 3.20. Uh, if you open up the door to your heart, I will come in and dine with you and eat with you. So I want to end this by saying, okay, number one, Romans 3.23, all are sinners. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but there's a free gift. gift Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, the gift of God is, is, is received by God's grace and our faith. Not by works. Not by works. Romans 10, 9 and 10. If we believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. And now, Jesus is knocking on the door. And it's up to you to open up the door to let Jesus come in. And that's the lesson for today. So, I think everyone on here is, uh, has done that, but I'm, I'm going to say a prayer of invitation just because I don't know who the other, the other six people are that I see that are on here. So I'm going to pray for that, and then you can close this out, okay? okay? Dear Lord Jesus, Lord, we come before you today, and um, we receive Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. We believe in him. We believe in you, Lord. We believe that, Lord Father, you sent your Son to die for our sins, and that Jesus rose from the grave. We believe that. We receive that. We put our faith and trust in that. And uh, Lord, we understand that as we do that, based on our faith in you, our sins are forgiven. You've taken them. You've nailed them to the cross. And you defeated death by rising on the third day. So Lord, I pray for everyone that believes that, everyone that, that maybe new, newly believes that, that we would be strengthened by your Holy Spirit. That you'll continue to draw us closer and closer to you every, every, uh, every day that we're alive. And we thank you for it. Okay. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. And thank you for all these people on Tuesday Talk. Um, I hope they have a great day. Um, please heal everyone who needs healing, yes, whether Lord. in their mind or in their body. Please heal them. Um, please help us every day with what what we go through. Help us with um, temptation. Help us try to resist sin, even though we cannot. We cannot be perfect. Only you are perfect. So let's have a great day and um, thank you for dying on the cross for us. In thank my you, name Jesus. Is Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, standing. My question is supposedly if a child passed. Oh, right, we got that already. All right, I think we got everything. And uh, we'll see you all on Wednesday night at our Bible study. But have a great day. And thank you for joining us on Tuesday Talk. Bye. Bye-bye.